iawn, wel newn ni ddechrau'r cyfarfod, noswe dda iawn i chi gyd, a chroeso cynnes iawn i chi i webinar cyswllfermio heno, sy'n rhoi sylw i um, gynllun grant y newydd gan Llywodraeth Cymru, sef gynllun grant gwrchuddio i ardie a buddsoddi mewn rheoli maetholion. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Farming Connect's webinar tonight, um, which will be featuring uh, the Welsh Government's Yard Coverings and Nutrient Management Investment Scheme. I'm Erin Williams and I will be chairing uh, the webinar tonight. Part of the meeting will be in Welsh, so if you do require translation, then please click on the interpretation tab on your screens and select the English. If you do experience any difficulties at all with the translation, then please let us know through the Q&A. Felly, bwriad y webinar heno i wyr o'i gwybod i chi am gynllun grant newydd gan Lywodraeth Cymru, gorchuddio i ardie a buddsoddi mewn rheoli maetholion. Mae hwn yn un o gyfres o gynlluniau grant sydd wedi cael eu datblygu gan Lywodraeth Cymru yn ddiweddar. A mae gyda ni ddau berson yma heno, sef Richard Evans a Kevin Taylor, sydd wedi bod wrthi yn datblygu'r cynlluniau yma. Ac maen nhw'n wneud eu cyfarwydd i chi erbyn hyn, oherwydd maen nhw wedi cyflwyno ar nifer o webinarau cyswllfermio um, yn ystod yr um, flwyddyn ddwetha yma. Um, Ma Richard yn mynd i fynd trwyddo um, y gofynion ynghylch y grant a hefyd sut i ymgeisio um, a bydd um, Kevin yma hefyd i gynorthwyo Richard i ateb eich cwestiynau chi ar y diwedd. Um, ni'n gobeithio bydd y webinar yn para ddim mwyn ar ei wawr ac os bydd na'r rhagor o gwestiynau heb i hateb ar y diwedd byddwn ni'n darparu a tebion i'r heini um, ar ffyrdd ysgrifenedig ac yn ei cylchredeg nhw i bawb yn dilyn yr webinar heno. Felly, mae'n bleser gen i nawr i gyflwyno Richard Evans o is adran amaith cynelydwyedd a datblygu Llywodraeth Cymru. Um, felly, croeso mawr iawn i chi Richard unwaith eto un webinar ni a um, disgwmani glywed bryst i gyda chi ddweud am y cynllun newydd yma. Na'i rannu yr sleidiau gyda pawb nawr gobeithio, os wnewch chi aros yn funud. Gwet, diolch yn fawr, Irwen. Um... Good evening. Um, so tonight we're just going to go through um, two um, grant schemes um, that are involved in on farm infrastructure improvements um, relating to agri pollution and improving water quality. Um, these will be quite um, familiar with um, one of you with you if you have previously looked at the um, farm business grant yard covering and sustainable. Um, uh, production grant. So I'll start with the uh, small grants yard coverings. So the, just the aim of the scheme um, is to improve on-farm nutrient management by investing in existing on-farm infrastructure. And the priority is to separate rain or clean water from dirty water or slurry or manure um, so that the rainwater does not enter the slurry store and, as a result, reduce the slurry storage requirement of the farm. Um, similar or exactly the same as the previous yard um, coming grant, it's based on a standard cost model. The maximum grant is 12,000. There's a minimum grant of 3,000. And for this budget, uh, for this window, we've got an indicative budget of three million pounds. So um, the figure that most people want to know, so the standard cost is £100 per square metre of roofing. So that equates to a grant. So the actual payment will be £40, 40 pounds per square metre. Um, and that will be regardless of your construction costs. So if you can do it um, at less than £100 per square metre, you will still get the £40 per square metre grant. So the areas that are eligible for support are new roofing over existing livestock feeding areas, livestock gathering areas, manure store, storage areas, slurry stores and silage stores. So those are exactly the same areas as the previous scheme. And um, subject to you applying for the, one of those um, primary items, those five roofing areas, you're also eligible to apply for some secondary items such as gutters, cross strains and so on, just to, again, improve um, water management on the farm. 
Um, I, I'm not going to go through the eligibility criteria. It is similar to the other schemes in terms of uh, you have to be a, 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 an active primary producer of agriculture or so on. Those are in the guidance. Um, but the key date is that you need to submit an application through your RPW online account by the 5th of August. Um, this is quite a simple online application where you, um, on the map of your holding, you select the area where the roofing is. You mark that with a cross. Um, that gives us a mark where the roofing is intended to go. You put an area of that roofing. And then um, to go with that application, you provide geotag photographs of the area in, in your application. Now, those geotag photographs need to be a, an accurate reflection of the area. We're asking you to take a photograph from various from um, various angles, you know, north, south, east, west, um, approaching the area. Um, and important to have an area of flooring as well. Um, there is a separate guidance on how to take, uh, how to submit the geotag photographs, so that's available online as well. So, Submitting an application before the 5th of August, it doesn't make, make a difference. They will all be a, a, um, looked at after the 5th, 5th of August. So it's not a first come, first serve approach. So once a closing date has, has passed, we will score and rank the applications according to the scoring criteria that's published in the guidance. Um, and we will select the highest scoring um, eligible applicants first and we will allocate the budget according to your ranking in that um, from your score. You will be um, offered a contract through your RPW online account, which you will have to accept within 30 days. And the key date then is that you have 12 months or one year to complete the investment and submit a claim. So I intend to go through some of the key requirements, really. So first of all, the floor needs to be impermeable to water. So it has to be a concrete floor, not a gravel or a stone floor. And if the concrete floor is full of serious cracks uh, or a serious damage and worn, that will also will not be eligible. So it has to be a reasonably uh, concrete floor in good condition. Um, once you put the roof up, we need evidence that the rainwater is separated from the slurry store. So we can't have the downpipe from the roof going back into the slurry store. And also the slurry store where slurry produced from that area has to be diverted to a store or a collection tank. So we are not going to support a roofing, which doesn't make any difference to the volume of slurry at the end of it. Um, a key change um, for, for this window is that if you are applying for a roof over a slurry store or a silo store, um, you need to inform NRW 14 days before starting the work um, that you are um, impacting on that structure. So if you're putting a roof over a slurry store, um, where it impacts the structure of the store, you have to inform NRW anyway, but we're asking for evidence that you've done that. Um, once you receive the contract and accept it, um, if all is well, you've constructed the roof. Um, the claim process is very similar to the other previous schemes submitted through your online account. We need invoices for all items, including the dimensions of the roof. So geotag photographs showing the location after you've completed the roof, so we can compare the before and after. And also then the geotag photograph to show us where the rainwater is going and where the slurry is collected and where the slurry is going. So that could be a series of photographs showing slurry going into the grid, going through a channel and into the slurry store. Um, just to continue on the claim, we need evidence of the planning has been received if you require planning approval. If you don't, there's a, a note from the planning authority to say it's not required. The same with the sustainable drainage systems approval. So the SUDS approval, um, we need to see a copy of that certificate or evidence that's not needed. And as I mentioned earlier, evidence that you've informed NRW. 
Now, just on that one, you can inform NRW online through their website. Um, I had a look earlier and it's quite easy to find that link um, and you will get an automated um, response to that message. So we we'll want to see a copy of that as evidence. So just some, some key messages to finish on the scheme really. Geotech photographs, please make them clear. And you know, it's better to add a few more photographs to give us context of what you want to do. So shows the background of the buildings next to it, the flooring obviously, and the whole area. Um, I'd just like to um, it, it, it emphasize that you need to look at the guidance and read the requirements against each roofing area. So the guidance for the um, livestock feeding area, collection area, and so on. Those are quite detailed, showing what's eligible and what's not. And if the photograph doesn't show that it meets that criteria, we won't be able to select that EOI. So for instance, if it's a feeding area, we're asking to see the feeding barriers and evidence that that is a feeding area. So a, a slab of concrete with a ring feeder on top of it and a photograph of it will not, will not be accepted. We need to see as the requirement we stated in the guidance. Um, planning approval and SUDS, it always takes time. So we'd encourage you to start as early as possible if you intend to put an EOI in, I think it's, it would, I would suggest that you also start the conversations with the planning authority to get the planning and everything in place in time. The 12 months does fly past um, when you actually need to complete, it, complete the work by a certain date. And finally, when, you, when you're sub submitting the application, just consider whether in Fort Water is going and whether, how are you gonna collect the slurry and make sure that you can evidence it as well. Because if we get a picture of the roof and the invoices and you can't evidence the studies collected again, we can't pay the claim. Um, so the guidance is online. Um, there is plenty of time to put the application in. So I suggest please read the guidance in detail first. And then the application form itself is quite self-explanatory and reasonably straightforward. Um, we'll take questions later at the end on that scheme. I'll give you time to th think of anything or um, type that in into the, um, to the question to the Q&A. So I'll go on to then the second scheme that we want to um, mention tonight. So the Nutrient Management Investment Scheme. And this is very similar to the previous SPG that was supported through the RTP budget. Um, again, the aims is very similar to the ASK covering scheme, although they're a bit wider. So we want to enhance on-farm nutrients management, so include slurry storage and so on. But there's also the opportunity to, to support certain other items and equipment in terms of precision slurry um, application equipment and some more specific um, infrastructure investments such as tanks, um, uh, slurry channels and so, so forth. So the budget for this window for this is 50 million. So it's quite a significant budget. Um, the grant will be 40%, but this is against actual invoiced cost. So the, what you pay for the work, it'll, that'll be 40% of that payment, as long as it doesn't exceed what you've put down in your application. So the maximum grant is 50,000. So to just give an idea, um, to get the maximum grant, the project will be over 125,000, but there's a minimum grant of 12,000, so the minimum expenditure is 30,000. Can we go on to the next one, or are we, uh, we stuck? No, we're not. Um, so the list of items um, is included as an annex to the application. So only the list items on that list is, will attract funding. So you can't buy anything that's outside uh, that list um, and get support. So in, in terms of the usual slurry stores, channels, um, roof coverings, the silage clamps as well, there's also a range of additional equipment such as um, dribble bars, 
um, slurry injection systems, um, tanks, and so on. So there's a, a range of equipment there as well. Um, but the, the main thing to remember is that the, the target of this scheme is to support farmers to come compliant with the slurry storage requirements, really. So um, to be eligible for the secondary items or the items such as equipment and so on, you'd have to make sure or evidence that the actual slurry storage capacity is, you, you, you meet the regulation requirements first. Um, so on the items, there are some changes to the descriptions from the previous SVG. So again, I would encourage you to look at the descriptions first and not just take it as the expectation that it was exactly the same as the SPG. There has, has been changes and some of them are quite important as well. Um, so in terms of submitting those application, there's initial EOI that's opened, opened yesterday and you have until the 12th of August to submit um, that expression of interest. On the face of it, the expression of interest is quite easy. You select your item, you put an estimate of cost, and you hit the submit button. Um, the important thing is to make sure that your estimate of cost is accurate and you're selecting the right item. So I might come to that later in the key, key messages. So once we've received that expression of interest, Again, we will score and, and rank the applications and we will send you an offer of support, which you will have to accept or decline. Um, once you've accept um, that offer, you will have then 12 weeks from the date that we've sent that offer to submit the full application. So the requirements in that full up, um, full application is wait for the next slide. Um, first of all, evidence to demonstrate your existing slurry storage capacity. So there are there is a um, a template, the link to the template from the guidance, which you can fill, explaining, looking, listing the current livestock on the farm, um, the slurry produced and detailing your existing slurry storage capacity. And that will give you a figure to show whether you meet the slurry storage requirements or not. Um, even if you already meet the slurry storage requirement, you still need to submit that evidence because that will be um, the justification for us to support you with the secondary items or the, the additional items such as application equipment. So you complete that. We will need a three-year business plan um, with three-year accounts and financial forecasts, and also three quotes for the each investment items. Um, however, if they're below five thousand pounds, only one quote is required. Um, so just to carry on on the application, the, these will be standard. Um, requirements. So the evidence of funding, again, a letter from the bank or confirmation that the fund, the match funding is there. Um, planning permission or says if you've already got that planning, you don't have to su uh, supply that at full application stage. You'll have to evidence that's at claim stage. But if you've got it, submit it with the application because it does make the appraisal easier for us. Um, and then there's an online application form with a series of questions. These are considerably fewer in number than the previous SPG. So they're quite self-explanatory asking, explaining what you want to do, um, what the outcome of this will be, and certain value for money and risk criteria in the project. Um, once the whole document, documentation is received, then we will start the application process, or, or the appraisal process, I'm sorry, not the application. So unless all the information is included, we won't start the appraisal. So another key message is to make sure that you submit all the information with your full application within the deadline. Um, so considering 
if all is well, you submit to the application, it goes to appraisal, we offer you the contract. Um, if you complete the work or once you've completed the work, you'll submit the claim as with previous schemes through your online account. And we'll, the requirements are in the guidance, uh, so includes evidence of, of, of expenditure, copy of the invoices, geotag photographs of the items are on your farm. Um, but another key message there is you will have two years to complete this work, um, but there will be no extensions beyond 31st of March 2025. So that is just to make highlight that um, the claims need to be in by 31st of March 2025 within the two, after the two years. So the key message is um, the requirements of compliance with the slurry storage capacity regulations. I would suggest that that requirement to consider what your current storage capacity should be undertaken before you submit the expression of interest to make sure that you are selecting items or if you're sell if you need a slurry store but your or other items such as roofing and so on you know what capacity you're aiming for and that you can get appropriate estimate of the costs um if, if i would suggest you avoid going for the slurry stores without looking at what other improvements can be made to the farm first to reduce the amount of water entering the, the store so there are other items there, such as the roofing, for instance. You can extend current stores, you can roof the stores. You know, those might be cheaper options than actually the new study store. So the, the EI window does not, do, not close um, until middle of August. So I would suggest you take the time um, to make sure that the investments are appropriate. And once you've identified what investments you want to apply for, you make sure that the estimates of cost are as accurate as possible. Once you put an estimate of cost and submitted it, that cannot be increased then. That is the maximum level of grant that you will be able to get. Um, so the other key message, if you're putting an EOI in, the, the requirements for the full application and the supporting documents is in the guidance. I would encourage you to start preparing those as soon as possible in anticipation of getting a, an, an offer to submit the full application um, because the 12 weeks will go quickly to get everything together. Um, and again, with a, the with a claim and uh, the process, planning permission and SUDS start early. Again, with the roof covering, that will take time. I know there's two years to put the roof, to do the capital investments, but the, a lot are still delayed by um, planning permission not being received. So that's another key message that I'm just saying again, um, mirroring what I said with the roof covering. The guidance that are available online. Um, there is a document um, explaining how to submit, how to submit your EOI, that's online as well. And there's detail of, um, um, well, there's no geotag photographs required at this claim stage, um, but that is available for the yard covering scheme. So between these two schemes, there's 18 million pounds available at the moment. Um, so that's a quick through on the scheme. So we're happy to take any questions that you have at the moment. Um, yeah, so open the questions. Yeah, I'm out of Richard. I'm a Korean and I have been to the Nilko Diol Heavy. I'm Camridia Stariet, Rai or Puncha, the Decalinade and Lean, our Kinslin and Chanel, a new Mar process on Gisho and Simrach Trahin, a Marduib Lenev Heavy and Ray Muyog of Lechos Nigid and Gobod, Trafertion Oil Gada, Kanya Tad, Kinslinio, a Kalkum Nia Heavy, your Oil Prashe. Need Peter Guaithin and Gorfenos, and I wonder why I would order a widiade with the Digwid, 